Hello, it's Friday. You may notice that there is no music. The argument I lost with my computer is about Pretzel, the music bot, who uh, no longer opens. And uh, reinstalling it did not work. I have one other thing to try, but it involves digging into the internals of my computer. And I'm not doing that right before streaming, because that's a recipe for disaster. So there's no, uh, there's no music bot music today, alas. But that's okay, because I think we're probably going to be mostly talking, because it's going to be a lot of planning. Yeah, every time I open it, it just, it just immediately crashes. It doesn't load or anything. And I don't know why. I don't know what happened. I have theories, but I'm an artist as opposed to an IT expert, so all of my theories are sort of half-baked. <laughs> but all that is to say, I failed to make it work. I had a talk with my computer, and my computer was like, no, no, I don't think so. Reinstalling it? No, you're, you're going to have to find and delete some sort of core library file. Good luck with that. I'm a Mac. So, here we are. Here we are with no music. But, this is an audience participation day anyway. So, let's see. Let's label our file here. Oh, music note. Sheep guana with boba tea. So, our goal today is to figure out what grand running pottery project I'm going to do for the next few Fridays. Now that I have a confirmed drop-off for bisque firing, I will ideally start to clear out my space and start to finish things and find them homes. And so I thought it would be a good time to plan a new sort of bigger pottery throwdown style, let's make a whole dinner set or something. Only not a dinner set, obviously a tea set. We get to figure out what a tea set includes, but obviously the basic tea set is a teapot, two cups, because you know, you have to share, cream, and sugar. This is the basic tea set. So, thoughts. Ah, good call. Sauces are hard to make without a, without a wheel. Let's do that. Let's, let's be jerks to ourselves. It's the point is to make it a crazy challenge. Because uh, I don't have access to a wheel, so this is all going to be hand-built one way or another. So yes, good call, saucers. Other, other requests, things that, that absolutely must be included. I mean, obviously, they don't have to be this shape or this form. They can be whatever we want, but... This is the basic, the basic demands of a tea set. The rules we're giving ourselves. Is there an assumption of cookies and such with tea? I see figments made. I feel like you might be going for 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 the request of a a tiered 
a tiered presentation tower? Is that what you're thinking? You were probably just thinking of plate. I've made it. Yeah, cool. <laughs> that that the uh, the tea time the tea time presentation tower. That uh. Oops. That has three tiers, obviously, because two tiers is just it's just a plate on top of a bowl. It's three tiers. Let's pretend that I centered those tiers. Excellent. So, I can't deal. I have to center the tear in my stupid doodle. <laughs> it looked like it was going to fall over, and I did not like it. Okay, so a teapot, two teacups and saucers, a cream pitcher, a sugared bowl container with a spoon, obviously, uh, and a three-tiered presentation no, a three-tiered presentation tower. I don't know. There's definitely a name for the serving tier thing, um, but I don't know what it is. No, one, one can't have the cookies toppling it over. So, just going to put a muffin on it. Because I have blueberries in the fridge. And I'm looking forward to the muffins. They'll be. <laughs> so I'll just. There. Muffins. Mm. Figments made. I'm going to say no. Um, largely because. I don't like ceramic trays. Uh, I prefer I prefer wooden ones. I don't know. I think I feel like a ceramic tray just adds a lot of weight to something that's already kind of heavy. So I personally prefer wooden trays. Anyway, you're gonna have to make multiple trips because you have a three tiered cookie present presentation tower. Someone Google what they're called. <laughs> Ah, yes. So so to go to go with the saucers to two small plates because you need to put muffins on them. Ah, uh, that's what the saucer uh, that's what I use the saucer for with the teacup. Um, although you shouldn't have tea bags if you have a teapot, you should not be that you're you're doing it wrong. <laughs> you should you should be making the tea in the teapot. You should not have tea bags. That's all inside here. Okay. So one hilarious structural challenge, and then a lot of small pieces. It's what is what we've planned. Um, this this is the hilarious structural challenge. So like that's too small to read my handwriting, but that's fine. Oh, I'm gonna go with tower. I think I think dessert tower. Cookie tower stand is just you, that's just someone throwing all the words in there. That's that's silly. Dessert tower though, I can get behind. So so a teapot. Two teacups and saucers, cream pitcher, sugar dish, bowl, container, lidded sugar bowl, a dessert tower, 
um, Figment, Figment made. Uh, I can't include a chocolate fountain. That would require some sort of pump. Able to pump chocolate. <laughs> um, so no. If, if, if I had a pump, we'd be making a, a, a fountain. So I feel like this is enough. I feel like I'm going to stop now and not ask for more pieces. Uh, I feel like I feel like this is enough of a challenge. So, so now let's do some themes. Sheep corner with boba tea. So, um, so ideas for for tea set themes. I'm gonna add in chickens. And quail. What other thoughts? While you think about it, what I'm going to do. Oh, snakes. Sheep guana. So, to get us going, I'm gonna, oh, owls, which layer is any of this on? Aha. Uh -huh. There. Poison, poison plants, that's... I, I swear. Why am I? Why am I even? There we go. <laughs> Layer failure. Okay. Poison plants. That's a little bit dangerous for a tea set. So. Teapot form. Let's see, a chicken, a chicken teapot is, is pretty, eh, let's actually, let's make it a rooster teapot, cause, cause why not? So, we can go with hmm. now the trick is that doesn't work <laughs> that form won't pour tea uh, so the, the trick of teapots I say as if I'm good at making them is is it the spout and the top of the teapot need to be at roughly the same height. So, but just slightly below so that you can still, so you can fill your teapot all of the way to like, or slightly above rather. So you can fill your teapot all of the way and not have your tea spill. But if it's too far above, you have to I do not know why why one gets tea set image why when why Tweety Bird could be a quail. I don't I don't I don't think that's correct. Um, so So the trick Let's see. You know what? Let's just let's just go mad. Let's let's do. Oops, that's the wrong way. Let's just do a legitimate rooster shape and see what happens. And see how bad 
it would it would pour. So there's a handle. It's a rooster, the rooster tail handle. It's, it's a shouting shouting it's a shouting rooster, obviously. Well, they might be scientists. We've already made a sheep teapot. Hello, Archangel Beth. So we've already made a sheep teapot. We could we could carry on. Although the sheep teapot is trapped in the closed uh, group studio because the world. So I don't know when when I get that back. Uh, <laughs> I promise it's the only I I say hi to people when they show up. I I will will politely not acknowledge you again if that is your desire. <laughs> okay. Now, where does the how does the tea? I guess we'll just give him a little tiny lid. Sure. A lid on his back. Um, actually, we can do better. We can be more creative than that, surely. Let's do like a feather sticking up. And then the lid will kind of be that. Oh, chick on his back. That's that's a that's a good idea. That's a clearer handle. Because I can you can cut just about any kind of lid shape, but it's like getting it's getting the thing open. And there we go. So So we have rooster, tail feather handle. This is all sort of a solid shape to give it some structure. Um, rooster has to be sitting because um, structural issues of teapot. So, so we'll, we'll loop this tail around. So that rooster is, is better supported. Also, hello, Auntie Shepherd. Quail Quail is on our list. So I'm just gonna go and grab some watercolor. Just any old watercolor. This seems nope. This seems fine. And uh, and clarify what in this sketch is a gap and what is a solid shape. So so rooster teapot. To go with Brewster Teapot, we still need to figure out cups, creamer, a three-tier dessert tower, a sugar container, sugar bowl, I'm just going to call it a sugar bowl, and, uh, and two plates. So... I'm gonna be honest. A part of me kind of wants the teacups to somehow be be eggs. I don't. I don't know how to make that work exactly. 
but hmm. the qu yeah how how to how to how do we how do we then because because so the the sort of ah but here this is the thing right do you want to drink out of this teacup? Is it, you know, is that, it just, it seems uncomfortable, but, um, but I'm willing, I'm willing to let you, to let you decide that that's what you want out of your teacups. Smooth it down. Um, more ripple, okay. So here's, here's, here, we're gonna have to make them a little bit bigger. Um, they're gonna have to be hilariously large chicken eggs. Not cause that's a little bit too much. Um, just because, because tea. So, okay, I got it. Yeah, they're more, let's, let's, they're, it's more turkey eggs, you know, it's, so we're gonna, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go with the, with the ripple. One side will be sort of higher and smoother. Then, it's just, so it's just, the cup is just, it's just the egg. The cup is just the egg. Will it be weird though if the, if the if there's a small turkey bowl and a giant rooster um, teapot? I don't know why my brain lost the word teapot. That's a little embarrassing, <laughs> given the theme of my entire branding. I mean, what is scale? Yeah, that's fair. Okay, so I, but I, I'm excited because I figured out I figured out a clever egg solution, y'all. I'm I'm pleased with myself indulge me. So I'm just going to switch to a different color here to make it clear. So then what happens is the 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 saucers are sort of the it's almost like an egg cup, right? It's got a little it's got a little sort of divot where where the egg rests like a raised center. I mean, pouring out of a rooster, uh, it, into into an egg. It's 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 weird and and beautiful and in, as good as the vomiting sheep teapot. Um. So the egg sits down in this little in this its little egg cup. Might be a, need to be a little bit higher. We don't want the we don't this this it can't fall over. Um. But I've 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 essentially made made a, a teacup that can't rest on the ground on its own because because I want it to just be an egg, right? So then this has sort of nest bits texture so that it feels like it's a little bit of a nest. Uh, how does one fire, oh, um, the egg? When, well, before it's glazed, it doesn't matter. It can just lay on its side, roll around. Um, after it's glazed, uh, it will need to be on a tiny stand with three little metal prongs that will hold it up uh, like this. Those metal prongs won't stick to the glaze. And that is how one fires the egg. I could also, you just not glaze the bottom bit and then rest it in a little trivet. But, um, but I feel like the base should be all glazed all the way around. So yeah, it will be on a little, 
a little pillar made of little wires. And that way it won't stick to anything. So then, in the little nest holder, to make it clear what's happening, we'll have egg pieces. Um, resting, resting down so they're all safe and not sharp. But that will sort of, oops, that will sort of clarify that what we are looking at is a hatched egg. So then these two things when separated, just for myself here, planning sense, are really that. Okay, so we have cups, saucers, and the teapot. Um, figments made, we've got uh, a pitcher, a sugar bowl, a three-tiered dessert tower, and two plates to go. I feel like we can have a lot of other chicks. I feel like, I feel like let's not load up the rooster teapot. We got a lot of ground to cover. Um, so, next we have, yeah, yeah, we've got, we've got plenty of places to put chicks. We can cover that dessert tower with chicks. Don't you worry. So now, we have the, so I feel like, I feel like for the sake of argument, they would actually use dessert towers. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't own one. Although I do own cake stands. Two of them specifically. But, um, but I feel like we're not being practical. I mean, I also don't actually use sugar bowls or creamers. Uh, so... You know, but I feel like but i i I feel like it's more about the challenge of the structure at this point, like what did i what did I call this what did i I called this a pottery mini series, and then I said we were doing pottery throwdown style, so I feel like I feel like at this point we're planning something that's mad, and that's okay if. If we decide as a group that the cake stand is, is or the, the dessert tower is unnecessary, we don't have to make it. Um, but you know. So, we have a rooster, we need a hen. So what do we think? Is the hen the creamer or the sugar bowl? Or are they both hens? Do we just have two little hens? Do we have a, 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 a creamer hen and a sugar bowl hen? Is it the teacups on it? Now it's a tea stand. Two hens? I feel, I feel like, I feel like two little hens. Okay, that's too challenging, Auntie Shepherd. <laughs> Who says if you want a challenging dessert tower, you should be, it should be a tree with removable plates on the branches. That is that is definitely a challenge. Um, but yeah, that's fair. The rooster needs his flock. Okay, yeah. So, so I think. Hang on, let me pull up some sketches of. Let me pull up some chicken art. That's right. I just have a bunch of chicken sketches around. As you do. Ah, yes. Oh, that's a good one. Perfect. I know exactly what we'll do. So. 
So obviously, the creamer. Is 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 a shout, is another shouting chicken. Let's let's try and get a shouting a shouting hen. Let's see if we can get the shape just right. A fat a fat little shouting hen. And of course, open. Now, how are we gonna do? Let's just, you know what? Let's just let's just assume that the tail is enough of a handle. Let's just let's just figure that you can pick up the hen. by the tail. And the inside is cream. Because hens don't have a big rooster tail to create a, a handle with. Okay, and then the sugar bowl is the opposite. The sugar bowl is is pecking at the ground. <laughs> Dubious. Pour out the cloak. Oh dear, no. Um, oh, or, or it could be like a wings, it could be a wing, I could have the, you could have the wings out a little bit, and it could be like a, like a wing, a wing pour. <laughs> Why won't you let me be great? Oh, uh, Okay. I'm gonna be honest. I think that that it's actually weirdly appropriate if cream if cream if cream pours from the back of the chicken, but I feel like in general the world is not gonna get behind us on that. Uh, I feel like oh yeah, the tail could maybe yeah the tail could kind of go in and be a handle. How do you, mm, yeah, I think it has to be a tail. I think the wing is too awkward. It's not a big chicken. You need to be able to... to pour the cream. So yeah, we'll just assume that this bit is kind of squidged in. The world must learn to embrace your artistic... Ah, yes. Um... Mm, chicken sugar bowl may have to have legs. That's a problem. Can we make it a tripod? Can we make it a... a... The chicken... No, I don't think it works. I think that it has to be legless like the other, like the other chickens. Oops. <laughs> you shake gently in a sugar cube. Oh no. Hmm. Chicken shapes. I 
I don't actually know how you'd how you'd get that to work. Um, yeah, I'm I'm trying to figure out how you'd how you'd get like the because uh, I'll be honest, I was just going to. Uh, I was just going to cut cut the hen kind of in the wing area and then have you lift the poor thing open basically <laughs> but then You have to fill it somehow, and then you have to sort of keep it from coming apart and keep them from falling out. Okay, so <sighs> hmm. I'm not, I'm not. So, so here's here's the thing um, about first of all about the cream, which is that you'd need. Okay, here is a chicken butt. Right. You'd need a pitcher spout. <laughs> right here. because you needed to pour <laughs> oh no Shep in all caps has said oh I totally know how you can do this in chat and now I am concerned um <laughs> oh god um and then, so then, I'm just gonna, oh, you're right, you know what? No, it's, it's, it's all cloaca. So, cream, cloaca, sugar. So, the thing about sugar is if it's not, you need some way to get it, a spoon or so I was just going to use one of the feathers as a spoon so that when you, you open it, there's like a, a feather spoon that you can use for sugar. Um, I don't know. I don't put sugar in tea, so I'm, I'm guessing here. But uh, I guess what you would do is have, again, chicken butt. Um, This time it's a slight chicken butt side view. I guess you just have a square, um, which I would have to make perfectly sugar cube size, or slightly larger than sugar cube size. And then you just, you still have to, you would, oh dear. Um, I guess you'd still need, you'd need, um, then then the bottom of your chicken would need a would need a hole with a with a with a cork in it that you use to fill your chicken up with sugar cubes uh notice the skepticism in my voice as i said that <laughs> sugar cubes um 
so. Because <laughs> personally, I thought that, uh, that the lid made more sense. <laughs> um, so here, here's what I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go. Chat is weird. Sarah. Thanks. Less cloaca dripping is best. <laughs> there. <laughs> okay, we'll rephrase chat. How do you let's let's see. Um chat likes cloaca. True, it's not like this is a new development. Um, oh dear. Chloric cream will totally work and support having a realistic chicken butt. This is very worrying. Um, <laughs> social distancing with my uh, Figment's maid has stepped away from 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 the group and sided with me on the the less cloaca dripping. Um, that's what I'm here for. Okay, well, I've given you both options. I feel like I feel like that's that's all I can that's all I can do. Um, dessert tower, I feel is is. Is pretty is pretty obvious. It's it's a, it's a tower of eggs and chicks. You know. Because, of course, it is. Um, and then, you know, egg, some upended <laughs> oh, the potu. That's what the potu is there for. Uh oh, my cat has arranged the curtain so you can't see his adorable sleeping face. Such a jerk. Um, yeah, eggs, eggs supporting nests, Arc, Archangel Beth, that is indeed what I was thinking. So we've got sort of tiers. We don't want to take up too much of the tiers with, so they'll kind of have that, that nest pattern that the cups have. Probably a little bit smoother. Oh, this we need to. Then let's have an upside down broken one. One more chick pecking at the dessert. This is a, a shorter tower. And then at the top. And then in the middle of the top, there's one chick. Just just one chick shouting at the sky. Seems seems fair. Oh, I lost I put I think the dessert shower should be a tree. Feral chickens.
I mean, I feel like most of us haven't uh, had to get their semi-feral chickens out of trees. Just... It's called small ninja chicken. Um... I mean, I can also just sculpt chickens. Um, so then I guess, I guess the plates are just, are just nests. Maybe with a feather? Plates. Dessert tower of chicks. Uh, Archangel Beth has a point. The stuff from a chicken butt that looks like milk is not nourishment. That is fair. Okay, so I feel like um, we've got one set pretty solidly sort of generally plant. Um, one set generally planned and designed to speak specifically to uh, Kevin, Auntie Shepherd. So I don't know how that will go down, but it's definitely a thing that we just did. So I'm going to put that in a group and call it chicken set. So uh, I call it Chicken set name my group. Thank you, Photoshop. Okay. That is one set down. I think it's a pretty solid I think it's a pretty solid option. But com computer. Stop why why you like this? There, thank you. Um just zoom out a minute. So it's first set down. I uh, can close all of my drawings of chickens now, which is exciting. Um, yes, yeah, so the list the list for the next the next option, because remember the whole point today is to do a bunch of these, and then we can kind of parse them. This is the this is the brainstorming session. Snake eating. Oh no, snake eating a quail. Oh no. Yeah, I, I feel like I feel like the I feel like in the sense of in the sense of snake and quail, uh snake will win. So the other things in our list are quail, snakes, sheep guana, owls, and poisonous plants. Um Also congratulations, Auntie Shepherd, on two more eggs, pipping, baby chicks on the way. So what I'm hearing is quail. The thing about quail is that I feel like it's just the chicken set, but shaped differently. <laughs> like, I feel like it's just all of the same ideas, but with quail. <laughs> That's why you add snakes, for the danger factor. Um... So, so there's some question there. It's like, do we do quail? Cause, cause it'll just be, I mean, well, yeah. But it'll 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 just it'll be the the same concepts. Support a snake crawl around with their mouths open to support egg cups. Oh no. I feel like what you're asking is for some sort of hilarious, like how, hmm, I need, I need, I need thoughts, I need thoughts on how to make murder quail into a tea set. Um, are we having murder quail fight snake? I mean, I'm, I'm kind of hilariously into to Archangel Beth's uh, snake, snake quail murder set where it's all like snake essentially essentially going after quail. Um, 
I know, your chat, you're supposed to give me, you're supposed to give me ideas. Um, the thing about, okay, the thing about murder quail is that as a figurine, murder quail is great because you can just stick tiny things to it. But as a functional piece of pottery, tiny things stuck to things break off, like, right away. Um, so, like a quail holding a knife, for example, is, uh, you're just going to break the knife off the first time you try and use the teapot or cup or what have you. Um, I'm, I'm kind of into this, to this crazy quail, uh, snake fight set. I don't know that quail fight snakes. Uh, I don't know that I care if they really do, but I'm going to Google it now because I, I kind of want to know. Um, quail snake fight. Well, bird versus snake. Murder, I mean, yeah, of course, of course, <laughs> of course, murder quail fight snakes. Um, well, I've got, I've got mostly, mostly snakes eating quail. Quail versus snake fight. Yeah, no, it's mostly it's mostly quail getting getting eaten by snakes. Is what I'm is what I'm seeing here. Uh, oh, Bert, a bird D and D set. <laughs> bird D and D minis. Oh, that would be fun. That's a different sculpting session, though. That's me whipping out the. That's me going old school, whipping out the, the sculpey. Hello, Necro Buffalo, and yes, we're we're having a cat cam day. The sun is out, so the cat is is happy in the window. So, I've lost. I've lost the looking looking up. Okay. So we've got snake quail fight, quails and armor, uh, bird D&D &D minis, bird D&D &D tea set. But a, a quailodon tea set, you guys? Instead of murder quail, should it be a quailodon tea set? Just, just a thought. Um, that's very... That's very Saint... Like the Saint George and the Dragon of... Okay, okay, I've, I've got, I've got a, a sort of impossible idea. I've got a sort of impossible idea. And, and I think I'm going to try and sketch it and see if I can make it. It's a little bit more complicated to sketch. So, so, I'm gonna start with, did I, did I save my, oh good, I did. We'll start with, uh, like, a sort of a classic teapot shape, frankly. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna do this spout without, without a wheel. That's going to be fun. Um, but for now, we're going to ignore that. So just a classic teapot shape. What happened there? Photoshop. It's a little bit... Now, now, the trick here, <laughs> the trick here is that, oops, 
is that this is part sculpture, part relief sculpture. Because I feel like it's a little too much to be like the like just a like it's not just a shaped teapot. So I think that in this case it's going to be a teapot. Hmm. It could Okay, well we'll we'll sketch we'll sketch this for now. And uh if I come up with something better. Going for kind of a, an actual St. George and the Dragon. Stop pinning the wrong button, um, thing here. So. so we need sort of that the snake is, is wrapped around the base. It's going up the backside and then its tail has become handle. So we've got snake here. And then in sort of St. George fashion, the sort of quail it in victory thing going on here. Made the snake too big, I think. Let's Let's adjust our snake scale. Quail fighting on snakes in a great that that's actually also a fun idea, chat. I was not looking at you when you said quail fighting on a Greek face. Um But I like it. Um, I realized that I need to open a reference image of Quailadin. <laughs> it's been it's been too long. Where are you? There you are, D and D bird party. Quailadin. Good. I couldn't figure out how to make the snake both the spout and the handle and still have it fighting the uh, paladin. So. So, oh, he's got like a, I give him a mace. Um, well, this one has, I think, the sort of, the, the spear. Because it's a, a presentation piece, basically. got a sort of a, a St. George and the Dragon vibe going on. Obviously, this is the, the wheat shaft that's like the helmet. Um... Just fiddle a little bit with the placement of stuff here. Just shift that around. Then I have no idea what I just did. Oh, 
let's let's save this file while we're here. That seems like a thing that would be a good idea. There we go. Yeah, St. George usually has a horse, but uh, we don't have a a real concept for uh, for mounted bird D&D. &D. Um, also, we don't have horses <laughs> in bird D&D. &D. We've never really discussed the scale, in fact. Um, all we have is sheep guana. And I feel like this is uh, enough. Just to play editor for a moment. Like, this is, uh, this is quite complicated already. So then you've got kind of a normal spout. Maybe on the other side, you've got the sort of the wheat bundle logo. <laughs> logo. Ah, the wheat bundle heraldry of the of the Quailden order. But the snake is coming up around it. See, that seems fun. But gets to stab the devil. So, so I think, yeah, the, the back is like there's the snake kind of curling sinisterly around the the wheat sheaf shield. And that's that's our that's our epic our epic quail religion teapot. Um, I kind of I kind of like the sort of weirdly sinister idea that the uh, that the cups are uh, are in the mouths of snakes. You know what? I definitely need to Google that. That's that's not a thing I'm going to be able to make up off the top of my head. Snake swallowing egg. I need to see that 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 weird stretchy that weird stretchy sh snake snake jaw thing they do. Oh, I love how I love how enthusiastic this snake looks <laughs> in these photos. Yeah, it's 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 a cautionary it's a cautionary tale tea set. Um is what's is what's going on here. So So you've got the, the egg teacup in the mouth of the snakes. Snake's head can be a little bit smaller because They'll eat hilariously large amounts of things, um, which means that that the uh, the saucer is just a snake. The snake's wrapped around the bottom and curling up the handle. Tr 
true. How would hmm, snake curling around the bottom? But then, so then you've got to because there's got to be quite a lot of snake. The thing is, um, so. So what we have is basically more 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 saucer than cup. Um, but again, I think that there's some some element of graphic sort of faking. So I think there's this raised snake who becomes sort of a painted on snake. Okay. Cert Tower is a snake that has eaten the bottom two layers and up as well. Oh lord, that's a bit much. Um. Right. So now, now we're to now we're to the other the other fiddly bits. So let's see. We've got a creamer, which is just. more of a classic shape. I think we're just going to go with more classic. This is a a not entirely classic but like more classically formed set. So what you're saying is you you think the snakes into the into the cream just sort of generally wrapped around it so that inside There's this. It's hard to draw uh, this particular perspective on a snake's head, but you get the idea. And in the bottom of the creamer is an egg. It's a quail egg, so it's speckled. right ah oh, they might be scientists you missed you missed our quailed in cautionary tale well allow us to elaborate um quailed is is murdering a snake but in all of the other pieces the snakes are eating eggs Okay, so <laughs> so now we need a sugar bowl. What? Okay, so I feel like if the creamer is just a snake, the sugar bowl should be just quailed and stuff. If we're if we're doing a proper we need some balance. Um so so I feel like what's the appropriate 
what is a good we'll just just make a sort of a general sugar bowl shape now how shall we we could go back to the crest and some and some feathers I feel like I don't want to do, if I've done sort of a relief painting of the quail, I don't want to try and, first of all, I don't, I just don't want to sculpt in, I, I'm not going to make it, I'm not going to be able to sculpt an armored quail in ceramic. Uh, it's just not going to happen. <laughs> it's not, it's, uh, it's too fiddly and detailed and small in this instance. I can't fake any of it. Um, yeah, I feel like sugar bowls traditionally have lids, and then their lid has a little notch. And out of the notch, in this case, I think the spoon will be a, a wheat sheaf. So out of the notch comes the spoon. So maybe heraldry again on this side. Spoon with a mace head. Oh no, such violence. Um, again, sort of the wheat lid, or maybe a feather. Maybe a feather. I don't know. We'll just leave that open to interpretation. And on the other side is uh, the helmet. I think. Sure. Somebody mentioned the helmet. It's a pretty great helmet. So this is a weird combination of like painting and, and then like another feather, you know. Um, it could be either. Sometimes people make spoons. Sometimes you just get a little sugar spoon. Um, I was thinking that the spoon in this case would be a stylized sort of printed because we we because we do wheat on all of the imagery. I was thinking the spoon could be that. The spoon could also be a weapon. We could have uh, we could have a tiny sword hilt leading into sugar spoon. Looks like a toothpick and a Q-tip. I don't know. Maybe not. Oh dear. Ants and the sugar is bad. Yes, that's lids. Lids are important. They help keep your sugar fresh and and insect free. See, there you go. A weirdly placed stem. Yeah, so it's it's now, now, uh, plates, let's, let's see, let's just, so then there are two plates, one plate, is a snake, but just around the edges, and then it becomes kind of like a painted snake. Is the other plate also a snake? I ask myself. Or, or is the second plate? No, it's also a snake. It's weird if one is a snake and one is not a 3D thing. So, 
So we have two snake plates. Plate just has a shield embossed in it. Yeah, hmm. I like sort of the idea that the plates are nests. But I don't really, hmm. Maybe one is a nest with a snake and one is a nest with the shield. In the center. So you've got both sides of the battle. Or I guess they could both have a shield in the center and a snake around them. Oh, nest, nest with an egg. But then, but if there's an egg, it's going to be in the way of your plate. I mean, yeah, that's that's obviously more clever. But, but the person who gets the egg plate has less plate. Ah, but if it's remnants, then it's already lost, and it might as well be remnants on the snake. You see, you see what I'm saying. One one plate is the quail plate, and one plate is the snake plate. Um. So. So how to make that work? Also, um, we have a three tier dessert tray, and I'm not gonna lie. At this point, uh, halfway through the stream. I'm regretting letting you guys add a dessert tower. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, what do I do with a dessert tower? I don't have an idea for a dessert tower. I mean, I think for, for right now, the shield, the I don't hmm. I mean, we could paint, I mean, we could always paint on eggs. We could always have a shield over over it, a painted on nest of eggs. And then this is a painted on sort of fragment of eggs. Doesn't have to be 3D. We've already established a combination. Oh, dessert tower. Again, I am not sculpting a quailodon. It's not, I'm not doing it. It's, it's got too many tiny fiddly bits. That's, that's a, as I said, that's a, that's a sculpey. That's a polymer clay project. That is not a ceramics project. Um. Because, I mean, I feel like it's just a repeat of the plates or the snake. Yeah, I feel like it's... So... Stand. Is it... Again, crest with the snake kind of around it. Overlapping it a little bit. Maybe, baby. Maybe no snake face, just. Then on this level, we've got. Oh, there's a there's a plate down here. Then on this level, we've got 
like some crossed swords. And then like the snake, the snake coming up through the floor kind of being repelled by the swords. And then up here, we have some eggs. Yes, cross swords symbolize the ever vigilant quail. Exactly. It's all, it's all, you know, it's religious symbolism. Not a laurel wreath, they might be scientists. All of our, all of our wreathing is done, as you well know, with wheat. So like a wheat. wreath because because that's the 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 quailodin sim symbology okay so <laughs> i'm feeling weirdly I'm feeling weirdly good about this, <laughs> like, as a, as a pastiche of, like, a weird religious pottery set, I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty good. Um, well, it's the, the, the hen of grasses is the patron, oh, let's do some, let's do some bird D&D backstory, quail it in from the beginning of bird D&D. There's a highlight of me reading A Prayer to the Hen of Grasses that uh, Auntie Shepherd, I believe, wrote. Um, I believe. Yes. Anyway, it's, it's, on, it's on Twitch if you want to watch it later. Uh, but we decided that the Quailden Order is an order of paladins um, whose patron god is the Hen of Grasses. And the Hen of Grasses is represented by a sheaf of wheat. So she's the goddess of plenty and food and fertility, etc. Uh, you know, because of course. So, um, so this actually all makes a weird, perfect, imagined religious sense, because the Quailden is defending the nest from from the serpent. It's it's like both religious and super literal, and I it it's I kind of love it. It's hilariously odd. But, but I feel like it's a way more interesting choice than just doing the chicken set, but with quail. So, so this is like sort of, I don't know, a combination of like Greek, Greek illustrative pots and like medieval allegory kind of stuff. Yeah. I feel like it's working, I feel like it's working pretty well. I feel like, I feel like as a system, we've created a, a an interesting, <laughs> an interesting set of, uh, of quail religious, of quail religious pottery, perhaps used at a temple or at a very religious quail home. And I kind of love it. So let's label this layer. Quailodin. Set. Good. So we've reached uh, the halfway point, which means I'm going to make more tea because I'm starting to get a scratchy voice and I've run out of tea. Um. Yeah, our fictional, our fictional, our fictional paladin religion is pretty is pretty fun. So we've done that. The rest of our list, we've done quail and snakes. We've got sheep, guana, owls, and poisonous plants. I'm feeling a little into the poisonous plants. As a totally different idea. 
so maybe while I'm gone for the next couple of minutes making some tea, uh, you guys kind of argue about what we're going to do next. Uh, maybe think about how to make poisonous plants into a tea set. I'm willing to go, like, sort of dark and poisony with it. Um, if, like, tongue-in-cheek poison plants tea set. If you guys are. Or we could just make a really attractive floral tea set. You know how I like botanical illustrations. So, I'll be back shortly. Discuss amongst yourselves. Also, feel free to make up more information about, uh, <laughs> about the hen of grasses, if you desire. And I'll be back in a couple of minutes.
Okay, back with more tea. To read about, they might be scientists. Spoiled cat. All right, let's. Really, we're not going to scroll back up. Chat, you're just there forever now. Fine. Be that way then. I can make the window larger. Alright, so, uh, teacups, poison bottles, skulls to hammer home the point, oleander flowers, make dice decorations, ginseng weed flowers, grow feral in California, and, uh, and bribing your cat to eat. Okay. So, back for part two. To recap, we have a chicken. tea set design, and a quailadin set design. Now, moving on, we've got uh, poisonous plants. Obviously, this is not going to be quite as sculptural as the chickens. So the question is, how to do poisonous plants. And make it not just flowers painted on. To a tea set. So I'm going to just Google some let's see, poison bottles. Which are the colored... They have a sort of a distinctive shape, and I worry that the top will make them. They make good creamers. And then let's see. Oleander. Which I haven't drawn in a while. And it's toxic in all of its parts. And then Jimson Weed. Ah yes. Datura. That's I wondered why I couldn't figure out what Jimson Weed was. Because I have always called it Datura. It's a pretty distinctive flower shape. Okay. So, first, let's see, a general shape. I think. For starters, creamer can be that sort of poison bottle shape. Oops, that's a bit much. It's pretty easy to replicate with with ceramics. And it's got kind of a distinctive shape, and then it's got, you know, the do not take. So it's it's got kind of a vibe. Um, just as sort of a general shape sort of creamer. And then I guess I feel like if we're going to kind of go that sort of bottle route, then maybe let's kind of carry it through to have the sugar 
be a similar kind of thing. Except maybe in this case instead there's just a skull on it. And sort of that rectangular shape. We will we will add in some flowers. So what's the other poisonous flowers, chat? What you got? What I just <laughs> I just had a moment and looked to make sure I still had audio. Uh because in my head I was like, what if you've been talking this whole time muted? Anyway, I've not been. It is fine. I looked. I was still getting audio levels. I don't know. I just had a moment. Um, yeah, let's look at Nightshade. Nightshade. Oh yeah, they're kind of like a like a tomato looking flower. I I'm I've always been a little bit mad that Lily of the Valley is poisonous because it's one of my favorite flowers. I love it. It's visually appealing. But it's it like this weird secondary. I feel like I feel like nightshade is good. Um I mean, a lot of a lot of plants are just poisonous. Don't eat them. But I, I kind of feel like if we're gonna go with the poison theme, we wanna we wanna go with like notoriously poison ones, like nightshade. Um, what's another What's another good one? I'm. Yeah, lily of the valley is 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 poisonous. <laughs> Milk, yeah, but I feel like. I feel like if it's, yeah, if it's, if we're going to go with the poison, poisony poison, if we're going to go with such the joke poison, not the joke, you know what I mean, the, the obvious poison theme, I feel like we need to go with sort of notoriously poisonous plants, like oleander, datura, nightshade, um, I'm failing to come, what's the, the one, like, it's, Not Digitalis, not Datura, not Nightshade. I don't think Nightshade. Maybe it is Nightshade, and I'm just thinking of the scientific name. No, nothing of the scientific name of Nightshade. Not. It starts with a B, I want to say. <laughs> Belladonna. That's the one I'm trying to come up with. Sorry. Uh, did not get enough sleep last night. My brain is slow today. Um, but I... Belladonna... Is Belladonna a member of the Nightshade family? Is it a name for Nightshade? It does not visually look the same. It is not also Nightshade. So we did Monk's Hood and Foxglove for Anger. Um, I don't really want to do monk's hood in a, in a, in pottery because it's kind of a fiddly shape. Okay. I'm getting different variations of nightshade, I think is what's happening. Right, yes. Belladonna, nightshade, same thing. But when you Google them, you get different images. So I think it must be, let's see, that's Atropa Belladonna. Versus what, what night, why are you different? <laughs> why are you so visually different?
so yeah, so what I've got is, is is multiple varieties of Solangea, or however one pronounces that Latin word. Um, specifically, one looks like this. That's too many petals. Sorry. Um, sort of a bellflower shape. other looks like this and grows multiple flowers five petals to a stalk and I do not know which is which they grow similar fruit I assume they are part of the same family possibly one is a European variety and one is an American variety you know what I will solve this by googling. I know this is sorry, this is not the content you came for, but now I'm but now I'm distracted. Okay. So Flowering plants, yeah, the family term that shaded off so much is poisonous. So it's, it's, yeah, it's a member of like the tomato, eggplant, tomatillo family. They're all sort of nightshade families. The question is, which one's which? And why and why am I getting this this extremely different okay Atropa belladonna commonly known as deadly nightshade Tropa belladonna, the commonly known as deadly nightshade, is the one with the bell-shaped flowers. That is what I've gotten. I don't, I don't know what these are, uh, but they come up when you Google nightshade, and I'm super confused. Let's do, let's do plant science. Like, what even, why are you two very different plants? It's fine. Both show up on everything. I don't know. I don't know who to believe. So whatever, let's not use nightshade. <laughs> How about that? How about... How about we use different poisonous plants? Um, and I stopped this, this foolhardy quest. Okay. Um, so sugar, cream, sugar, poison containers. Um, teapot kind of needs to continue the, the theme of at least sort of the shape. Square maybe? 
How many sides does a poison bottle have? Unclear. Six, maybe? Maybe they're a hexagon? Let's assume they're a hexagon, because I have a pattern for a hexagon. <laughs> Let's be a hexagon. So. Ah, I've drawn this wrong, but that's fine. So, teapot, hexagon shape, to mirror, to mirror the poison. Maybe let's kind of do the poison bottle lines on, like, alternating sides. Poison ivy did not get mentioned. Um, I'm immune to poison ivy. Or at least the outs. I've never eaten it, and I don't intend to, but um, but to the oil. They do not react. So let's... Oleander's attractive. I was going to use Nightshade. Yeah, I know, right? It's, uh, it's my one secret superpower. Okay. Back to Nightshade. I'm, I'm back to, to being, like, maybe... Because it's just, it's got such a good, like the one that's, that's sort of the, the bell shape has such a good, just profile kind of going on. And because they have these berries. And the, the berries are extra poisony. And it just, it feels, it feels right to have berries. So yeah, there you go. It's no nature. Yeah, with, with, with me on the poison ivy immunity train. I don't know about poison oak, um, and I don't intend to attempt to find out. <laughs> So I feel like, again, this is going to be kind of like a relief sculpture kind of deal. Where, like, the leaf is flat against it, but the flowers kind of lift off some. Then let's see, the top is obviously the, you have to, to take hold of the flower to get inside. And there's a berry. Oops, that's not the erase button. So we've got a creamer, sugar, oops, sugar and a teapot. Let's make the teapot a little bit bigger in relation to the cream and sugar there. Cups. Ooh, mistletoe is a very yeah, it's another attractive poison. Um so let's actually, you know, maybe every so the so maybe the cream and sugar poison bottles in the teapot is one poison flower, and then maybe everything else, maybe each other thing is a different flower. So we have like a hex cup, right? Because we've already established that sort of hexagonal. And then it's got a saucer. 
that I guess is round. I'm... Or maybe it's also a hexag, hex, a hexag, a hexagon. <laughs> maybe it's also hexagonal or a hexagon. Um, for the sake of... Nope, that just really didn't work. Who knew? It's, it's a circle. It's a hexagon in a circle. Ooh, the saucer could be a leaf. Um, it's a good, a good large poison. Anyway, so I feel like, I feel like each of the. Let's just do a quick copy paste here. Each of the cups. Anything with a flower should be a different poisonous flower, I think. Um, because that seems fun. So. Missile. Can't spell missile. To save my life, there it is. I mean, I say a poisonous flower. Mistletoe is isn't so much a flower, but it is it is visually appealing. Or flattened. <laughs> Just put it on his skull. Uh, it is it is a it's mistletoe. Mistletoe is an excellent. An excellent, terrible, terrible and appropriate so a mistletoe cup, um what else did we have? Oh, and it can kill gods, yeah, it's it's the ultimate poison um. Mistletoe cup, uh, what do we get? Oleander, let's do Oleander. Because Oleander is also attractive. Five petals. What's an Oleander bud look like? Spike, good, perfect. So let's see, we've got Oleander, Mistletoe, Belladonna. Um, should work out the plates. These. Then it kind of has to be the same. The plates kind of have to. So let's let's actually. The plates have to match so you know which plate goes to which. So. So just sort of a little bit around the edge. Of the plate, one side. So the plates can match the, the poison flowers. Or elephant ear plant plates. Mm. Mm. Poisonous leaves. Let's see what happens. Oh, it's just poison ivy. Cool. Yes, I, I know. Poison ivy. Just lots of images, just poison ivy. It's just all of the and lethal toxic wealth in here. Yep, there we go. And lethal toxic plants. Okay. Elephant here. Plant. Oh, isn't that like what is is that the 
a tree, right? No. I am thinking of something else, I believe. Oh, yes. No, we have those. I remember those being a problem. It's giant metal. Stinging hairs on the leaves. Ah, it's ostrich. Oh, it has it has adorable little little pink fruits. <laughs> oh, Australia! Of course, you have a giant, toxic, stinging metal tree. Of course, you do. Um, of course. I have so many images of poisonous plants open right now. Google's got to wonder about me. <laughs> so then, then we've got. I like, I like the, nope, whatever that was, don't do it. I like the elephant ear plates, but I wonder if they're gonna, if they're gonna work with the, with the poison, or if it's just gonna look like, uh, like, um, like I'm making a tropical jungle set. Because uh, they they're they're a pretty common sight in you know tea party decorations and that kind of thing. They do make a good plate though. So I don't know. Maybe we'll go with it. Plate, cups, oh, I should give the cups handles, should I should, because I'm the one that likes to drink from things without handles, other people, other people like to pick things up, it turns out, with handles. Yes, don't, don't touch the poisonous things. Bless our parents for teaching us what berries not to eat so that we all survived childhood. Now, now, are you going to make me do, are you going to make me do a poison dessert stand? Hmm. Okay, I've I've run out of run out of space here. Um so so we need to keep some of some of this consistent. So I feel like we need to keep the hexagon and the lines going. Else Else, how will anyone know they're a set? <laughs> yeah, I was the, the the there is I was thinking oh whole mushrooms, but at the same time, I don't know. We we're trying to make a consistent set, so there's an element of of we have to use the themes we've already built, and one of those themes. Hexagons. That's why I'm vaguely skeptical of the uh, of the leaf plate, because I'm not convinced it 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 makes sense in the overall in the overall theme of things. But. I mean, I like so I'm, I'm I'm considering I'm considering options. So, what what if 
plate, not leaf. Just going to make that disappear briefly. What if, what if plate, just plate? Just a slightly larger plate. But plates have These plates have, have, like, oh, let's look up my favorite poisonous mushrooms. Let's see, death cap. Death cap mushroom. Which looks a lot like every other mushroom. So instead there's like a mushroom growing out of the plate. I don't know, it still feels... Still feels like it doesn't work. Like this feels cohesive. And I feel like... Okay, first of all, I feel like we, there's no dessert tower. I feel like it does not work with what's going on here. Second, I feel like these plates are just also poisonous plants. Um, part, well, I think it's partly because everything else is um, is kind of paint on slash relief sculpts. So nothing else is a is an organic shape. Yeah, that's I feel like I feel like it kind of just has to be more more flowers basically. I feel like I'm doing Nightshade again for no particular reason. Um, and then, I don't know, maybe, maybe more, uh, maybe more mistletoe. Just kind of keeping it Oh yeah, that's that's fair. This this should probably be a hexagon because because teacups and such. So, yeah. So that kind of thing I feel like that sort of has to be how it goes because there's such a specific there's a visual system we've set up and now we sort of have to stick to it or or things don't look like they belong together And we want them to look like they belong together. Yeah, the mushroom set is a whole different set. So I feel like that's kind of the poison set. I feel like there's no dessert tower. I feel like it's that silly and too much. Um, this feels like a more, uh, let's say a more personal, <laughs> a more personal set you know, between you and a trusted enemy. Just a more close-knit 
tea party. Just no no cakes, just uh just the poison sugar bowl. Okay, it's poison flowers. The the institution of, of Quailadin and some chickens. Where's where's my notes? There they are. Okay. Probably got time to do one, maybe two more. So we could do the mushroom one. Um, mushrooms are fun. Everyone loves mushrooms. Uh, or we could do something different. Uh, what do you, what do you, what do we think, chat? Carry on with mushrooms because mushrooms are fun. Uh, go back to to something different. Any any thoughts? Oh, I can I can add fiddly details to mushrooms. Don't you worry, <laughs> um, because first things first. Oh, I better label all of my things here. Poison. That's not how you spell poison. I'm gonna ignore it and pretend that it's fine. Because uh, first things first, obviously, the teapot is like a tree stump with some some branch bits that are the handle and the spout. The lid is sunk into the top. This is the way you lift it out. And then, of course, let's see. Uh, mushrooms on stump. Give me some image. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. That's what I wanted. Give me some some good stump mushrooms. Shelf 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 fungus. Yeah, so Some good, some good stump mushrooms. I think we're just doing mushrooms. I'm not sure we're differentiating. Um, in part because I feel like at this point, I would just fall down a Google hole. <laughs> I'd be like, let's just Google which mushrooms are poisonous and which aren't. And the internet would be like, well, it's complicated. So I think I think what we're doing are visual mushrooms. <laughs> As opposed to uh to specific mushrooms. In fairness, a lot of mushrooms are toxic, so it's probably it's probably both. But uh but in this case, the goal is just, is just to have mushrooms. Let's do some more. Shelf over there. <laughs> that 
mushroom. Any mushroom is edible once. Ah, yes, well. So. So, I mean, that just kind of is what is what becomes clear in general. Now, let's see, cups. So, cups could have kind of the same theme where they're, they're like a hollow log. Um... But instead of instead of a branch handle, you've got like a mushroom handle, and then another one. This one has a shelf fungus handle. I, there's a technical term for them, I'm sure. I, maybe it's shell fungus. That's what I call them. So. Exactly. And I've got, and I've got a lot of, a lot of brown natural looking glazes at home. Planning ahead. Um. And then what do they get? I feel like they might not get saucers though. I feel like, I feel like these might be saucerless because I feel like the plates are the upside down mushroom caps that we were talking about before. So they're a little bit like a dish, a little bit. And then they've got the the light imprint of the ribs going on. And then just that sort of dish hint of the top of the mushroom. Yeah, like shallow bowls. Like saucers, even. Um, so they've got, yeah, so, so that they've They've got kind of this shape to them. Just a very shallow bowl. And I guess you could put a log in one. And that would be fine. Um, but I feel like they're more sort of separate plates. Um. So then the cream is obviously just another another cut off stump with some mushroom cream pours out of there. But then I think the sugar, just as long as I'm going to put the tea bag. I'm telling you guys, if you have a teapot, you should not have a tea bag. You should be making your tea in the pot. I'm worried about all of you. Then you need more than one teapot. Okay. Um, so then the sugar bowl, though, I think. Oh, uh, let's see what happens if I Google fat short mushroom. <laughs> wow, Google auto filled that with fat short kid. Wow, Google. Wow. Harsh. <laughs> Cutting plant, a tea plot, even. Oh, I love it. A tea, my tea plot. 
uh, on the bright side, when I when I googled the the mushroom I was looking for, uh, Google was like, "Yeah, no, we got you. Here's one." Um, so, so the sugar bowl is. It's a short fat mushroom and you take its cap off and inside there is sugar and the spoon what is the spoon piece of piece of wood maybe mm. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. I'm really, I'm really making Google wonder today. I've just Googled spoon shaped mushroom. Um, and it has found me a mushroom shaped spoon rest, which is not the same. Oh, now there's, that's actually somebody, somebody else has a good idea, which is that you, you do the, the spoon on this end. And then the handle is the mushroom. That's actually pretty good. Oh, let's see. Yeah, or it could be like a weirdly like that. Well, that's more fun. Let's go with that. Tip that mushroom over. Oh, like our craft suggested. Okay. Oh, I should probably do a tiny sketch of how this how this opens. Because you know, there's sugar inside. So there's that. Yeah. Branch of the leaf on me. No, I think I think we're going I think we're going hard in on mushrooms here. I'm actually getting pretty fond of this. This is this is kind of fun. It's very uh it's very fairy forest but make it weird weirder try and give me some space here because I gotta uh, rearrange my my drawings try and make everything fit Got to make I got to make a mushroom a mushroom dessert tower uh, after all, because obviously that has to happen. Oh oh yeah, this is Auntie Shepherd wanted this bad wanted this to, this this horrible thing and I I it it sounds it sounds horrible and amazing but like. But like, yeah, it, it's kind of how how do you how do you get away from the idea that that like your dessert tier is is you know mm 
multiple levels of of fungus, basically. Because, I mean, that's just too good, right? Like, there exists a shelf of fungus that grows just like this. How could we possibly not do that for our dessert tower? Then it's going to have to come kind of We need to to make sure it's supported, but also make sure it doesn't fall over. So this will be, the balance of this will be the structural trick. And then of course it's got like some mushrooms, obviously. You can't have it be just the shell fungus. Not when there are so many other mushrooms in the world. So yes, like this. Yes, stag I was I was I was I was seeing what you were talking about. Archangel Path, I was I was I was reading I was reading your staggered your staggered fungus shell vibe. I got it. I I am prepared to make that happen. Yeah, there we go. Nice. So then, just to to add a to add a use demonstration here. What are we gonna do? Be like an orange. Yeah. So then, then here's uh here's some macarons. Because this is a classy tea tray. And then and then some tiny cupcakes. You know, so that people know what it's used for. And then, I don't know what's on this tier. It's true, it's a bit late to worry about fiddly. Um, well, the thing about, the, that's kind of the reason they're in clusters, that they can all kind of stick to each other and be kind of like closely attached. So instead of being like one spindly mushroom sticking out, when I do that, it's like a big mushroom, but when it's a bunch of little ones, they're all sort of, they can all be supporting each other in like a little, a little forest. So they're all supporting each other and becoming one bigger shape. Oh, petty fours. Um, that's probably the wrong accent for that, but, uh, but I know, I know what you mean. Fancy, fancy little, little square. Yes, good. So. So this is a, just, this is a mushrooms set. Um, I know I'll be honest, I think this one might be my favorite so far. It's true, it's an English take on a French word. Oh. Like Des Moines. Punctuation is made up and the points don't matter. Fair enough, yes. Um, so yeah, I'm actually I'm actually pretty into this one. This one has has a lot of has a lot of potential. This will have to be hollow. It's gonna be a crazy construction. I mean, it all has to be hollow, but um, otherwise this will be quite the weighty, 
the weighty tear. Des Moines, Des Moines. I think I've told the, the, the Lenore City story before. It's in Tennessee and there's a town called Lenore City and you can tell if someone's not from around there because they try and say it Lenoir. <laughs> Lenoir City, no, no. Lenore, it's Lenore City. Lenoir. Yeah, I mean it has to it has to have a as long as this bit is sort of thick enough, it can be basically hollow. Um Yeah, so you know, hollow. Maybe keep that thicken the walls up a little bit as you go down. so that it's got a base to work from. Madrid. Well, they're definitely saying Nevada wrong. Oh yeah, like a vase. Or a vase. All right, so. Your blank layer. Good. So, recap again. Missouri, as opposed to. Yeah, Missouri. So, we got a chicken set. Still pretty solid. Um, oh, turned on everything at once. Got the, uh, the Hen of Grasses tribute set. You know, for religious tea services. A fairy ring would give a nice table bed. We've got a poison set. A little bit smaller and more personal. And then we've got mushrooms. Put some more. Some mushrooms here. But it adds weight because I'd have to do like a whole plate, right? They'd have to do like a plate and then there'd have to be like mushrooms all around the sides. And then I will have added grass and plate. Well, not grass, it'll be dirt and ground, but. but it adds additional weight. Although it would be good if it was modular. So maybe maybe this is definitely the first thing that will break off. But we'll just we'll just deal with that for now. It's its own layer. It's fine. Um, maybe inside this is actually um, a support structure. Also a hidden container, but but that actually could, in fact, um, 
be a modular staple base. So that this would slot, then this would need another color, need another explanation color, um, and this would then, you know, slot in over it. Um, and then it becomes, uh, a, you could store stuff, you can probably store other stuff in there, but also it just, it, you can take it apart, it adds support. Um, in fact, it would be probably, it would be helpful if all of this were modular, honestly, for the sake of using the wrong, I need red again, um, for the sake of storage, it would probably be helpful. this was all modular and could slot together um, just in general. I know that I don't have a place where I could put a tower of, of mushroom <laughs> of mushroom display. You know, it's good to be able to to store things, although this is clearly um, clearly something of a a display piece, <laughs> a choice, if you will. Ooh, metal layered cookie tins and metal cake tins, fancy. <laughs> yes, leftover ice cream buckets. Uh, yeah, I, I keep I keep slipping a in a pistachio gelato jar. All right, so I feel like that's got the mushrooms kind of cleared up. Um, right, not that long left. Probably. All the pieces, that would be cool if all the pieces could fit in the dessert tower. I think that it won't be able to. Um, because this is a crazy shape. Um, and it's it's just really hard to make organic also modular. Just because of the nature of making something look organic. Um, but yeah, I feel like maybe the dishes and the, I don't know. The pot, the pot is, it's at least, it's the sort of thing you display on like a tray on like a table or a sideboard all the time. It's, it's that complicated. I mean, this stuff kind of maybe goes in a china cabinet, you know, but, uh, but crazy mushroom stuff is like, it, that's just a thing that's out all the time. That's just, that's a choice you've made. A, a, a strong choice. Very specific visual thing that you've, that you've chosen to do permanently. So it's a part of your general aesthetic now, is, uh, is mushroom teapot. All right. It's about 15 minutes left. There's not really time to do a whole other set, I think. Um, so let's just, let's just review, chat, hang out a little bit, uh, talk about, talk about, uh, maybe our favorites, thoughts, thoughts on, on, on what to move forward with. The quill go in a museum. Yeah. So, um. So let's sort of review the chicken set. Uh, it's kind of, it's uh, it's the most sculptural of the ones that we've done. Everything is kind of a whole animal. So we've got a whole rooster teapot, a sort of chicken creamer, chicken sugar bowl, little egg cups, 
a nest and egg dessert tower, which, I mean, we can also just choose not to do dessert towers. Um, little nest plates. This is kind of one of the more sculptural. It's definitely the one with the most animal personality. And we've got the quill inset, which is definitely the most fanciful. It's It's got a very sort of medieval vibe. A bit of a bit of a of a reimagining of a like a saint dish set or something. It's the quailed in snake battle. It's a little bit more of like a painted on decoration classic shape. Classic shape with a twist design. But it's got the right vibe for, say, someone who plays a lot of D&D, &D, or uh, someone who's into weird medieval pottery. Yeah, it's, 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 like, it's like props for, for, for bird D&D, &D is what it is. And then we've got sort of this, this little poisonous plant set, which is kind of, it's, it's like a little charming kind of personal set. It's the kind of thing like you might have at your goth friend's house. She'd bring out her, her do not take creamer, her skull sugar bowl, and her like poison flower set, you know, and you'd uh, you'd share hibiscus tea, which brews a crazy bright red color, and uh, and wear black. So it's it's definitely got a very specific charm. It's like a, a weird twist on a very sort of polite Victorian gold and floral um, classic tea set. So it's kind of got the, the clearest twist on a tea set theme, I think. It's, it's sort of the clever, the clever wink set of the group is a little like... Oh, I see what I see what you've done there. Um, and then, I think what is clearly the craziest, most epic to try and do is the uh, is the mushroom set, which is a lot of complicated pieces. <laughs> um, and it's all logs and mushrooms. Yes, red singer tea for the poison set. And that's, those, those are four very strong set contenders for, uh, for a long, a long project. I have a suspicion that the mushroom set is in the lead. I designed all of them and think they all look fun. But... Getting the sense that possibly mushrooms are in the lead. Let's do a bit of a ranking, and you can tell me if you agree with this, because this is how I feel like y'all feel. So tell me if I'm wrong. I feel like it's mushrooms, then poison set, then chickens, then quail of it. In the ranking. Um... Okay, so, so poisonous plants and mushrooms are kind of a, an even an even keel at the start of the of the tier. Okay, that's fair. No, I got that figments made. I understood. I don't know if Chet did, but I understood that that you meant the ranking that I just said. Oh yeah, the mushrooms would be a hilariously high price. Um, the mushrooms, the mushrooms would be just silly, basically. <laughs> Uh, but to be fair, any of these sets are going to be, a whole set will be expensive. A set with a dessert tier will be expensive. Um, because of the amount of, like, it's, 
it's a set, right? So if a teapot's like eighty dollars, each teacup is maybe thirty. You're already you're already at like a hundred and twenty for a tea set. So, um, so no, this would be this would be an art piece. Um, this would be this would be a crazy the mushrooms would be a crazy art piece, whereas the the poison set would be like a set that someone might actually store in a cabinet and use. Um, which, uh, which is fair. Um, so, so yeah, so I'm, I'm get so comfortably saying that poison and mushrooms are kind of the top sets and then, and then sort of quailadin and chicken waffle back and forth. It sounds like people are more interested in quailadin if they're more interested in fantasy RPGs, because of course, um, So, I feel like, I feel like what we'll do is make it, I'll think on it for a bit, and then I think we'll make it a kind of a competition between, between poison and mushrooms. Because part of this is not to make something, I mean, it is, I, I would like someone to buy my pottery and pay me money for it, but, um, but the, the idea behind this is more to have sort of a, a, a kind of crazy project to stream. So the idea is is to have like a whole set that I'm gonna make on stream for a number of streams, like a little mini series, uh, like a pottery mini series where I'm making something a little bit crazy, instead of just like a one off, which we usually do, where it's like, oh, I've made a, I've made this sculpture, I've made that sculpture. The idea is that this is gonna be a stream mini series where I'm doing like a whole set of something. It'll involve some work off screen because a lot of it, like, like with the sheep teapot, um, I'll have to do forming first because I have to get the form to a certain amount of dryness before I can safely build onto it without it collapsing. Um, so, for example, I'd probably make the hexagon shapes the day before. That kind of thing. Uh, yes, to sell the DVD. Um, but yeah, so it, the idea is that I'm I'm going to be doing a little sort of mini series of of pottery production streams where I'm I'm making a set of things. I'm making a whole group of something. So this was the behind the scenes planning episode. I'm just going to keep switching these back and forth. So I, these these feel like they're the the clear front runners. So that's I feel like. That's we've worked that out. That's good. I like I like all of them, but I kind of agree. I feel like these are 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 the a little. This is definitely way more esoteric. Like this is kind of more of an, an illustration for something. Um, and then this is a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Okay, chickens. Chickens are fine. Yay. But uh, these are are the more interesting of the of the four. I think. So I'm comfortable with that. Thank you for voicing your opinions. In spite of the fact that we still have a little bit of time, what I'm gonna do is save this. Open, nope, I'm not open. Make a new file. Then I'm just gonna draw you guys a quail quickly. Uh, and then and then we'll wrap up. So Quail. What kind of quail will we do? Um, a murder. Well, I I knew it was going to be a murder quail. <laughs> yes, I, I understood. I understood that. Um, I was going to say a quail with a halberton. Uh, that's not. That's not the right thing. A halberton. Better. A halibut and a halibut, a, hal a halbard. Just gonna. Yes. Okay. That it, it is a halbard is what I thought it was. Cool. Um, just had to be sure. Just, just had to be sure that I was correct. <laughs> halbard with a halibut stuck on it.
Okay. So quail. Where are my reference at? There's my reference. Good. Quail. So. We're going, we're going for a for more of a domestic quail vibe this time. So our, our quail warrior is going to be uh, thick. <laughs> Which is fine. I'm okay with it. Um, but I don't, I think I need a different stance here. I'm going to use If you're going to wield a halberd, you need a, a strong stance. You know. Got to be, you've got to be braced for combat. I don't know, maybe I've, maybe I've done a Bob White accidentally. Oh well, that's fine. <laughs> okay, how, how does one wield a halberd? <laughs> Feels like a two-handed weapon. Uh, just gonna sit here holding my tablet pen, like. Yeah, I feel. I feel like I've done. So like up there, and then a stabby bit, and then a. Bigger stabby bit, because if you're going to have a long pole, may as well also put a spear on it. Am I right? You know it. <laughs> All right. And... Uh-huh. Uh. Maybe. I feel like I feel like that's somehow incorrect. I'm gonna have to Google wielding Halbert. Well that's a lot of anime characters. That's not helpful. I don't need to know how the Dark Souls protagonist wields a halberd. I need to know how an actual dude wields it. Okay. Okay, no, it turns out that that's more or less correct. Just needs a little bit more here, and like a little bit less here, and then. This is more down there. There we go. Good. Um. Tidying that up. I don't know. I don't know why he's. I feel like you don't wield a hal halberd with your with your pinky up. I think we'll we'll just. Have it be a little bit less dainty. There we go. Yes, a Bob White warrior. Okay. Bob White quail. Show me their little markings. Yeah, so. a little bit 
a little bit silly of an expression, but it's fine. I'm fine with it. Does he have armor on? I feel like he has armor on. Little leather helmet, a cap. Hmm. Let's let's see if I spelled Gambison right. Yish. Uh, it's too it's too covery. Is that, is that halberd appropriate? It's certainly silly. Um, but we do we do leaf we do leaf plumes um, in in bird D and D because uh, it was decided early on that wearing feathers was a little bit uh, like having a necklace of fingernails or something like it was creepy. <laughs> so cool. Done. Oh, there's a wick. Oh, good. Oh, such such fancy outfits. Such fancy outfits. <laughs> it's like, it's like they're going on a war adventure with brightly colored hats. Oh, goodness. Well, there's a Wikipedia entry I'm not sorry I looked up. Let's see, what, what kind of, what kind of armor though? Any armor? We just don't, we just don't armor. We don't believe in armor. Oh no, there's, there's, no. Maybe they painted their armor color. I don't know. Unclear. <laughs> War adventure. Unclear. But, um, but what is clear is the puffy sleeves. Such puffy sleeves. Just such, hang on. Just the sleeves to end all sleeves, you guys. Just. You don't even, don't even know these sleeves. Okay, we're gonna give him the benefit of the doubt and say that he has, that he has brought along a breastplate because, I don't know, it feels like feels like he should. And then of course, we don't we don't have pants, but but I feel like we need to carry on this this hilarious pleated pedally skirt thing at least there. There you go. Um, quick sketch, uh, but no regrets. <laughs> Oh, I have so many, I have so many windows open right now. 
too many windows. I'm just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write down a note for my future self to, uh, to explain what I was thinking. Is that how that German word is spelled? Ish? Sure. Good. I may want to like ink this properly later and later I'm going to open it and go, the hell did I do? <laughs> so I'm just going to label it. Just quick label. Uh, Bob White Warrior. Yes. With Halliburton. <laughs> well, you don't want much, do you? Really? Just a, just a durr woodcut. Just one of the most famous artists of all history. Sure. Just, just mimic his style. It'll be fine. Um, anyway. Pretty, pretty okay with that capping off uh, Friday Tea Time today. So, I think uh, we finished our Bob White <laughs> Albert Baring uh, mercenary, German, our, our German-speaking Bob White mercenary, with his puffy, puffy sleeves. Uh, just, just hang on, just, just to, to, I'm just gonna, in case, in case you just want to see what I'm talking about, just, just go and see how not exaggerating I am. Just... Just go and see the foolish hats and the crazy sleeves. I have too many windows open now. There's there's the one I need. Okay. Yes. I am not exaggerating. If anything, I have downplayed the craziness. <laughs> Simply by putting it on a bird who does not wear pants. The color plates are amazing. They're hilariously brightly colored. Just like... Also, a lot of bare legs in the color plates for some reason. I'm not clear on why. But what I'm saying is this is 100% appropriate. <laughs> oh, stockings. Yeah, such, 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 such bare legs on these, on these, uh, these warrior gentlemen's. Of course they would. Why waste a good why waste a good pair of pants that could be shorts? <laughs> Bare legs and cod pieces. Oh, the more that I learn about this, the better it becomes. We can see their knees. Ah yes. So, I hope that you've all enjoyed this week's Friday Tea Time for Bob White, Bob White and the Fancy Dress and the Fancy Dress Warriors. Uh -oh. Just going back to that wrap up there. Mushrooms versus Poison Set. Stay tuned for the future voting of uh, what I spend the rest of my year working on. Poison versus mushrooms versus uh, Bob White Landschnecht. That is definitely not how you pronounce Landschnecht. And yet. <laughs> and yet I continue to butcher German even though Artcraft is definitely still watching. Thanks for joining me. I will let you know more about this crazy mini-series I'm going to do as it progresses. I'll either put the vote on Twitter or I'll might put it to patrons only um, because uh, you guys give me money. 
So you're more important by virtue of that. Remember, I have a Patreon, which you can join if you aren't already a member. Patreon.com slash Sarah with T. The link is underneath in Twitch somewhere. I will see you on Monday. I won't forget it's Monday this time. Hopefully I'll have the music pod back and we can all have a nice chill Monday art day where I will work on something else I'm just working on already. Until then, have a good weekend. Stay safe, everybody. Stay well. And I will see you later. Bye.